Do you want to know how good is the post Delve reward Tomb Racer? That's a mouthful. Then I'll tell you. <laughs> Welcome to another JMP video. I'm your host, Yonari, and today I'll be telling you how good is the Tomb Raider after the rework and the DOS update in Uber 10. But before I, all of that, I need to mention uh, this and the following Uber 10 videos that will be coming on all the way until uh, the this series is done. Every single video will come out on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time if I manage to do this. If I don't, then obviously there's a lot of work that I need to do. There's like 10 plus requests that I need to do but I have every single uber 10 video scheduled to come out every single week if I manage to do this uh, until I can get myself a new PC once again because I will be moving out away from where I live in Puerto Rico so yeah if you want to know more of these uh, make sure to go into my discord server and make sure to also go into my YouTube community tab or YouTube video that I should may either made a video a community tab or just check on the discord server so yeah if you want to know everything everything will be right there also, I will be moving everything into a format that is going to be post commentary instead of a live commentary. So it's going to be a little bit easier for me to edit videos. So yeah. That's going to be how it is. Now on with the Tomb Raider video. So the Tomb Raider is a class that got reworked in the DOS update. So a lot of people still have don't know the strengths and weaknesses of this class. And I'm here just to tell you my opinion on the class post rework. Unlike all of the classes in the game, I, I have no experience with the Tomb Raider uh, early game. But looking at the class stats and just using the character end game, I can give you somewhat of a decent opinion on the class. So keep all of this in mind that I have no experience with this class early on because obviously this class already got reward when I already have my Tomb Raider end game. Uh, but like always, stats. Here's the stats. Just pause the video if you want. My gear consists of critical damage, movement speed, all pieces of gear. Like always, you should be using that on the Tomb Raider because attack speed is useless on this class. I had the standard movement speed equipment with movement speed buff ally, movement speed banner, energy regen ring because of Banshee's boon, trailblazing arcane because of combination of damage and speed, and the Lunar Lancer subclass because I use this class a lot for low delving and this subclass gives me a consistent uh, bit of movement speed every single time. It is much more consistent than the Candy Barbarian subclass even though it, it gives 5 less movement speed. My gem combination, you can just see all of them right here, but like I always will mention, Vampire Vanquisher, Pirate this and Class Gem on every single class if you're using the character for over 10. This character doesn't necessarily benefit a whole lot from survivability from Vampire Vanquisher, but the movement speed is always great. The Pirate this does help out with the extra DPS, but this character already does pretty high DPS, but you can use that as you want. Class Gem is going to be a pure bonus on this class and the other Empowered Gem ability is up to you. Now let me just talk about a little bit of my opinion on this class. So like I mentioned before I literally have no experience early post delve to a uh, Tomb Raider update uh, yes, like I mentioned, it's a mouthful, uh, but take my opinion with a grain of salt. But I will say that looking at the character's stats and seeing how it performs at NK, I got a pretty good understanding of how good it is. And like I mentioned in my Revenant video, this could be argued as being the best early game class in the entire game, uh, but I'll still say the Revenant is still slightly better. Even still, this class is super solid all around class, which is a strong suit. It's going to be a survivability and ease of use. Not, not only that, it's going to be among the top three overall characters in the entire game. To be comparable to the Revenant, that's a really big compliment because, yeah, this class is super, super really ridiculous. Once you start seeing the properties on every single ability you're going to see why do i think this is just i think it's it's probably the best reward that we've gotten thus far it is the strongest uh reward like the biggest buff that we got out of all the characters in the entire game and i'm talking like this is stronger than the Draco, this is stronger than the Revenant's reward, this is stronger than the Ice Age reward, this is the huge jump that the Tomb Raider got, it's just monumental. So with that being said, let's start talking about the abilities, starting off with the basic attack. So the basic attack is more of a utility basic attack, it's not going to be your main damaging ability. You are going to use that alongside your main damaging ability like Draco, Pirate Captain, Chloromancer, Neon Ninja, etc. Which are the minions. And yeah, this is just going to be a utility basic attack. This will do one times damage multiplier and it will attack at a 4.166 attacks per second at base. Uh, this is among the highest base attack per second in the entire game out of all of the characters without any buff. This is the highest. But however, this is one of the basic attacks that will not be changed via attack speed gear. So it is stuck at a, at a 4.6166 attacks per second uh, which among the max amount of uh, movement speed class this is lower than the 1.5 base attacks per second which is like dino tamer for example and so on and so forth ice age also 
Like those characters will shoot faster or will attack faster than the Tomb Raider at max attack speed. It does however have a 6 block range which is decent for close range character and it procs one part of the passive ability which is going to be the lifesteal portion and it also does heal out all of your minions which is just really good. And yeah those are pretty much the important details about the basic attack. It is a solid basic attack, pretty poor in terms of damage output but even after getting triple in terms of damage it's still pretty low and damaging for on a basic attack that goes to show how ridiculously weak this basic attack was prior to the rework like 0.33 was just a joke one times damage is still kind of bad but it's better than nothing and considering that its utility is good speaking of passive ability let's start talking about the passive ability because it is an extremely important thing to note if you're planning to use a tomb racer so or one more information about this class so soul color this is the passive ability and i'll say it's pretty nuts on its own what it does is every 10 seconds i thought it was 15 but no it was 10 <laughs> you will get a restless soul which is a soul that it falls around the tomb racer you get a uh, you get around the tomb racer and what it does is that allows you to summon the minions alongside getting one soul you also get one minion to spawn one skeleton you also get this soul uh, aside from the every 10 seconds you also get this soul from defeating enemies so every time you defeat one enemy you will get one soul that also counts if the minions uh, your minions actually kill one enemy so if your minion just decimate one enemy randomly you will get one soul and you will get one extra minion one extra skeleton so essentially what this means is every time you defeat an enemy or every 10 seconds you're going to be able to spawn two minions uh, so that is pretty nice that is a lot that is a lot of minions very easily and you can have up to a maximum of three souls on your character and defeating enemies will not make the skeleton possess this will only happen if you activate the ability bontourage so this will only just make sure to have all six minions that's it uh, aside from that you will not be able to get like, the possessed minion that is only tied to the Bontourage ability which is pretty nuts and to top it all off you have a 2% damage lifesteal and like I mentioned in the Revenant video damage lifesteal is based on how much damage you do HP lifesteal is based on how much HP you have so this is a damage lifesteal this is usually the strongest lifesteal in the entire game pretty pretty insane considering that yeah once you start once I start talking about uh, Banshee's boons you're going to see why and so yeah this Passive ability is just high up there in terms of how ridiculous it is. Just like the Revenant's passive ability, but a little bit slightly weaker. Uh, but honestly, com anything compared to that monstrosity of a passive ability, it's, it's, it's just it's a big compliment. Like, it is. It really is. And... Yeah, uh, that, that passive ability is super good on the Tomb Raider. Now that you have a pretty good understanding of the passive ability, I hope, uh, let's continue with the first ability, Bontourage. Bontourage is your main damaging ability as a Tomb Raider, since the majority of your damage will come from the most part, this ability. And I'll say this ability is pretty nice, and I really approve this rework, what they did. So what it does is when you press the Bontourage ability, it will consume all of your restless souls. So like I mentioned in the passive ability, all of your souls on your character. And it will spawn a, a, the skeleton one per soul. So if you have three souls, you will spawn three. If you have two, two souls. If you have one, you will spawn one skeleton. That's pretty much how it is. If you already have a maximum amount of minions, which is six, instead of overriding the minions, you will make them into their possessed state. It will, they will have increased damage and they will do more damage, which is indicated by the purple HP, which you've probably seen it multiple times throughout this video normally they will do 2.25 times damage multiplier per minion which is just insane considering that you can spawn them really easily minions are stronger than the chickens from the boomerangers ult which they do two times damage this is 2.25 and this is not their possessed state this is their base state this is just ridiculous they do attack once per second and they last for 15 seconds if you don't heal them and they will last less time if they take damage which is one of my biggest gripes with this uh, ability and I, I don't know why they didn't remove this when they did the rework since it's just an inconvenience to be honest but oh well uh, but uh, like all minions a single target and it attacks at random enemies now possess minions this is just nuts if you look at it, this character this is just ridiculously powerful so what they do is once you get them into their possessed state each minion will have a 75% damage increase per hit that is just what so in other words instead of just doing 2.25 times damage multiplier you will be doing 3 3.9375 times damage multiplier or 3.93 times damage multiplier which is just insane 75 percent damage increase that is a lot of damage increase and considering that it's just coming from one possessed minion you can have up to six possessed minion yeah take that with a grain of salt it's just ridiculous that is damn near revenant's basic attack just one minion one possessed minion that's just stupid how strong they are if you want to know how good that that is at end game 
And in other words, pretty much every possessed minion in Uber 10 can dish out around 20 something million damage per hit. That, pff, you know what? that is 20 million damage without arcane per minion on a possessed minion. That is just ridiculous. And, and yeah, pretty much one arcane minion can destroy even one star bosses. It's just really, it's just out there. It's just way too out there. And however, they do take twice the amount of damage and they do last the half amount of time, which is seven and a half seconds. But you do manage to maintain a possessed minion alive for 30 seconds. If you manage to do that, just by healing them up with either the class gem or just with your basic attack, they will lose their possessed state. So they will have that possessed state for 30 seconds, which is still a lot of time, considering how much damage they do. And yeah, that's pretty much how they work. I would say for a minion type ability, and considering how easy this is to get due to the passive ability and just getting the possessed state, this is just insane. This is just ridiculous. They can also take aggro, if I forgot to mention, and it's just stupid how good these are. Tomb Raider is a monster of a class with this minion, considering that these minions can create other minions. This can make the Tomb Raider the laziest class in the game. And like legit, if you have enough stats, you can literally just walk around. The minions will literally just kill everything and you will have a snowball-like effect. And you can just keep going and keep generating minions just by doing absolutely nothing. Literally, it, that's how good this ability is. All you gotta do is just keep pressing the Bontourage uh, ability every now and then. And there you go. You got pretty much the laziest class in the entire game. That's why I would probably say this is among the top 3 best overall characters in the entire game. This ability alone, combined with the passive ability and then combined with Banshee's Boom, which I'll talk about like right now. This class is just out there. It's super out there. It's so ridiculous. It's super strong. And honestly, it doesn't stop there. Like, the two abilities, like Great Goliath and the Banshee's Boon, I forgot to mention about Great Goliath, like, my god, Great Goliath is so broken as well, like, what the hell, this character is what the hell. Let me start talking about Banshee's Boon and, obviously, the class of ability. Uh, this ability, what it does is, makes your basic attack do 1.5 times damage multiplier whenever you press the Banshee's Boon ability, instead of the 1 times damage multiplier, uh, which is the regular damage multiplier. It will do an AoE, instead of just attacking directly, it will have a 4 block range, and you will actually get an uh, increased damage lifesteal from 2% to 4.66%. So that is almost damn near Revenant's lifesteal right there. It will also make the healings on the minions faster from, I believe it is going to be from 2 HP uh, per tick to 10 HP per tick. I think it is a lot of HP. You can heal the minions just really quickly. And to top it all off, you get 90%. <laughs> 90% less damage, so 90% minus 90% incoming damage. Like, so you do more damage, you get more lifesteal, you have better crowd control on your basic, and you take 10% of the damage. So, to put it into perspective, at around 30,000 power rank, you take approximately 210,000 damage from enemies in over 10. With Banshee's Boon active, you will only take 21k damage. Okay, yeah, totally not overpowering the slightest. And you also summon a minion with the class gen that heals all, all of your other minions, which I do believe they heal like 30 or 40 HP, they heal like crazy, for 2 seconds. And it can also attack dealing like, I believe it's 0.66 times damage multiplier, 0.65, but honestly, it only lasts for 2 seconds, so it will die immediately. Um, but by the way, like I just mentioned, this ability, you will consider, oh yeah, this ability is super powerful. And I bet it has a really long cooldown. Nope, uh, two second cooldown. <laughs> So yeah, as long as you have pretty much energy, you can activate Banshee's Boon, and that is just ridiculous considering that the minus 90% incoming damage, the more lifesteal, the more damage, the more crowd control that you do get, plus the class that you do spawn, it is kinda, kinda broken, uh, I will say. So yeah, combine these, all of these, with all of the overpowered minions that you do get with their regular Bone to Rage and passive ability, you can just see how good this class is just an early game. It's so stupid, it hurts. And oh! Boy, I'm not talking about everything. I'm not done. Let's start talking about Great Goliath, the ultimate ability. There's so much stuff with the Great Goliath. So I'll try to keep it brief because honestly, it's so stupid. The Great Goliath got so, like, probably out of every single thing, it got the biggest buff. Like, it is so ridiculous. Bontourage got really big buffs, but the Great Goliath got a, such a ridiculously large buff that it honestly hurts how strong this character is. So, start talking about the base Goliath. The base Goliath, which is a Goliath that you do get without any minions, it does a base 5 times damage multiplier and it attacks once per second. It does, however, have a 50% uh, chance to do a special slam attack 
that can do three times the amount of base damage. So if it is going to be five times damage multiplier, five times three is 15. So you will be doing 15 times damage multiplier on a 50% chance ability <laughs> from a minion. Okay, that is this, to put it into comparison, that is the same damage multiplier as the Candy Barbarian's ultimate ability. Yeah which is one of the strongest abilities in the entire game Yi, and that is coming from the base goal line Yi. <laughs> this base goal line will last for 10 seconds and this has a 8 second cooldown so yeah you can keep a 100% uptime without cooldown reduction equipment and the goal line doesn't take damage so it will last for the 10 second duration and it can take aggro so combine this which has a mechanic of pretty much making it stronger with each possessed minion so before what it was is for each of the minions that you do have, that you did have, it will sacrifice them, making the Goliath stronger. Now, you have to have the possessed minions, so the minions with purple HP, in order to sacrifice them or remove them from the possessed state, making the Goliath stronger. The Goliath per minion, per possessed minion, you, it gets a 0.75 times damage, base damage increase, and also a 5 second extra duration. So, uh, to say, uh, to minion Goliath, instead of just doing 5 times damage multiplier, it will do 5.75 times damage, and it will last for 15 seconds instead of 10. It's going to be like that all the way to maximum. However, there's something that I learned very, very recently, like just doing like some searching on this character. And I noticed that the Goliath actually has one little mechanic that I forgot to talk about. So once you max out your Goliath, once you do sacrifice all six possessed minions to summon a Goliath, the Goliath will actually get a purple HP. At first I thought that this was nothing, but what this means is actually when you spawn a max goliath it gets this possessed state similar to the skeleto so it technically gains the seventh skeleto once it just so pretty much every single time you use a six minion goliath instead of just getting the damage from a six minion goliath you will actually get the damage from a seven minion goliath so yeah as, as first i thought that six minion was the max buff goliath but it's actually seven minions and if any of you are not following with uh, any of the numbers to put it into perspective a max out goliath has a damage multiplier of 10.25 times damage multiplier base and uh lasts for 40 seconds oh yeah i forgot i didn't mention the 50 percent slam like ability 30.75 times damage multiplier that easily makes the this ability or this that attack the second highest multiplier in the entire game this is higher than the neon ninja shuriken this is higher than even some of the biggest burst damage out there this is higher than six bonds from the draco blowing up all of them at the same time that is how ridiculous the slam ability is 30 almost 31 times damage multiplier that is just out of this world broken and the highest damage multiplier for those who don't know is shadow hunter soul that ultimate ability is just broken ridiculous overpowered but it only has to be a shadow hunter with old i can say shadow mark enemy with this is just 30 times damage for an extra damage ability without counting all of the regular minions that you can get just all over the place you yourself attacking with your basic attack like dps on this character high up there really high up there and which this is just stupid strong uh, how to get like your max out goliath and it's, it's just stupid it's just ridiculous and considering that this is somewhat easy to get uh unfortunately on uber time you're not going to kill a lot of minions unless it is a kill authority enemies or you're doing a five star dungeon or you're doing a three star dungeon or something like that you're not going to get a six minute goliath for the most part but on something like those <laughs> what um, and considering that the goliath lasts for Pretty much 40 seconds doesn't take any damage and it will do just that ridiculous amount of damage yeah that this broken it's pretty broken and, and yeah pretty much i know this video turned mostly into an in-depth guide of the class instead of just talking about the class and how good it is in uber 10 but honestly this class is just good in uber 10 like well not even good in uber 10 it's good in general this class is just strong in general uh but is it the best no, it's not the best. It doesn't have the best momentum out there. Uh, it only has, starts having good momentum once the minions start killing somewhat fast. So fast enough that you don't get like really far out of range. So you don't get the movement speed buff from allies, which is around 15 block range, by the way. Uh, but still, it is just a strong class. It's just one of the best all-around class in the game. And easily the best starter class in the entire game. The best fight out of the best five starter classes. This is easily the best. This is easily the strongest one right now. Uh, give this class a shot. If you haven't used the Tomb Racer post delve rework, give it a shot. It is stupid powerful. This class obviously shines at early game, 
but you can use it whenever you want. The stupid amount of survivability, pretty good DPS, crowd control, the ult being broken, and yeah, this character is just good all around. For early game, that's where you're going to see this character truly shine. And that's going to be everything for today. Look out for the next episode, which will be on next month's day at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next class. Probably I might end up doing the Shadow Hunter. Who knows? It just has to wait until, you know, future me decides which class would it go in which order. But yeah, those are going to be it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. As always, leave a like if you want to help the channel grow. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And that is all for today. Once again, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and keep on hunting. Ta yeah.